How's it going, guys? It is... I don't have my fucking watch on right now. It is 4.17 a.m. on the 8th of March here in Japan. And we have a medium difficulty question for micro slash clearly we've got an angiogram here. So let's make this a cardio renal one as well. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the deal a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, mehl man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel down below. And I start the clip. 32 year old male comes to physician and he's got a blood pressure 155 over 90 and a renal angiogram is shown. Infection with which the following virus is most likely to be seen in this patient. So this is past level in the sense that when we have this type of angiogram, even if you don't know what you're looking at, all right, which is, this is showing us the string of pearls appearance. I've just fused beads with pearls there. Uh, the string of pearls appearance that you get with polyarteritis nodosa, you need to know that this is caused by hepatitis B sometimes. Okay, so 30% of patients with polyarteritis nodosa are seropositive for hepatitis B. So we could be showing you this angiogram. You say, well, what about fibromuscular dysplasia unrelated, woman 20s to 40s with high blood pressure? Well, as I'm going to uh, release in my new PATH PDF probably in a month, a uh, month and a half or so, I will show you that uh, for fibromuscular dysplasia, the beating that occurs occurs more proximally. See where my cursor is right now on the screen? It's going to occur more proximally in the renal vasculature, whereas here in this image for polyarisidosa, we literally have the proximal part of the renal artery spared, and it looks like we just have these more terminal pearls that stick off. Okay, so let's just whip through the answer choices. Obviously, step one's pass fail, but when we talk about simple virology, there are a couple structures you need to know, and I'm going to tell you without any bullshit. Okay, exactly what they want. So. Let's just whip through the answers. Choice A, DNA enveloped circular is our correct answer. Hepatitis B, okay, not dramatic, as I just said. So they want you to know, yes, DNA enveloped circular, pass fail exam, but that's one of the three I want you to know. The second of the three I want you to know is that the wrong fucking answer here, DNA enveloped linear, refers to the herpes viridae. Viridae means family for viruses. So that's all eight herpes viruses, HSV1 and 2, VZV, BV, CMV, uh, roseola, HHV6, HHV7 causing pityriasis rosea, HHV8, complete sarcoma like viruses. So those are all DNA envelope linear. And what they're going to do on the USMLE is show you an easy picture of herpes labialis, herpes on the lips. And then the answer just going to be DNA envelope linear. And if you've gone through my clips here on the YouTube, I've already made clips like that in the past, okay? But here for hepatitis B, DNA, DNA enveloped circular. Now, the third I want you to know is going to be just RNA segmented. That's going to be influenza virus as well as rotavirus. Okay, so many students studying for STEP will be aware that influenza is segmented. Okay, it's RNA, but it has segments. Hemagglutinin, neuraminidase are two of the eight segments for influenza. But you should also know that OMG, rotavirus, watery diarrhea in children, unvaccinated children in particular, or children just prior to the age of two months, clearly they're not going to be vaccinated at that point as well. Uh, that's going to be double-stranded RNA segmented, okay? And rotavirus is wheel-shaped. That's it. We could go on a 40-minute discussion, all the viruses, all their structures, waste of fucking time. You know the deal when you make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.